We're lucky the mountain bikes cover a broad range of sizes these days, but sometimes riders at either end of the spectrum can feel a little shortchanged. So as GMBN's shortest rider, I thought I'd give you some tips that I've learned over the years on how to get the best bike for a short rider. Having been a bike journalist in the past, I've ridden many different bikes from many different brands, and no one seems to have the same opinion on how to build a bike for a smaller rider. Some will just scale down the front end, some will scale down the chain stays as well. Some will give you completely different wheel sizes, so 650B only for shorter riders. Sometimes components are scaled down too, like the stems or even the crank lengths but there's no one size fits all. However, I'm gonna go through some of the things that I've learned over the years that'll help you pick the best bike for you as a shorter rider, some of the things I consider, and something you can do to fine tune your ride after you've bought it, just to make it feel really custom fit. So when you're looking to buy a new bike, it can be a bit of a minefield searching for a small bike. And what does small actually mean? Small could be for a five foot five rider, which would be no good for me as a five foot one rider. So generally brands will tell you the ideal range of a height for a particular small. They should list it in the geometry spec at the very least. So you don't need to be a geometry geek to know what sort of geometry you need to look for in a new bike. If you've ridden bikes in the past, you should be able to find the geometry of that year and that model on the internet. And then you can write them down and start to compare notes between bikes. I like to write stuff down in a notebook or a spreadsheet and start to identify things like, did I get backache? Did I struggle to maneuver the bike? Was it tough turning in corners? And all those sorts of notes will start to build up a little bit of a picture about what sort of geometry works for you. Without going into a great deal of detail about geometry here, there's two measurements that will make the bike feel a little bit too big or too short. So the top tube length, that's a number that you want to look at for when you're sat in the saddle. Anything too large, if you feel too overstretched when you're pedaling or sat down in the saddle climbing, then that's a number you might want to scale down for a new bike. The reach is down here and it's something that you want to look at for when you're stood up on the bike. So if a bike felt too long when you were going around corners or stood up with a saddle down, then perhaps you want to scale down the reach. I would look at the seat tube length and think about how close that saddle is going to be. If you're on a trail bike or an enduro bike, you want it to be as low as possible because a dropper post will accommodate your riding position, but you want it to get out of the way for when you're descending. Consider that my inseam is about 79 centimeters, so anything close to that is actually really gonna get in the way. Also consider the standover clearance up here, because if you ever touch down on technical terrain, it can be terrifying to get back on to a tall bike with a high standover. Anything from 20 millimeters can make a massive difference in your confidence in getting back on a bike. So some brands will scale down the chain stays for shorter riders. This is a bit of a debatable one. Honestly, I've ridden bikes with the same chain stay lengths that feel lofty in some brands and nimble in others because there's so many other numbers in the geometry chart that will affect how nimble a bike feels in the corners. Personally for me what's more important is the bottom bracket height. As a small rider I find that cornering can feel like a really big movement so the lower you are the less of a movement it feels, to me anyway. And also it keeps the standover clearance low as well. So I would always go for as low as possible. And sure, you might have some pedal strikes if you're riding through rocky terrain, but honestly, I don't find that that's a problem that often. Most of the time I'm freewheeling through rocky terrain. 
Wheel size seems to be the biggest debate when it comes to smaller riders. A lot of people will tell you that a smaller rider should be on smaller wheels. I've not really found that to be the case as such. I think you should pick the wheel size that you want and the ones that suit your style of riding. Don't pick something just because you think a shorter rider needs it. Now, 29er wheels, they can be a bit of a fight in the corners and they can be a little bit troublesome in slow tech descents, for example. But I think everyone faces this kind of problem. They have a bigger gyroscopic effect, which kind of fights you in the corners, but every rider will go through this. It's not just a short rider problem. Now, I absolutely love mullets. I love the space that you get at the back. I love how nimble they feel in the corners and they're really manageable in tech. But I do think that 29ers are faster and I'll always run 29ers when I'm racing and I'll run mullet when I'm having fun on the trail. So in conclusion, I would pick the wheel size that suits you and don't be pressured into something just because you're a shorter rider. Now don't just run a new bike straight out the box as it is. You might need to customize some of your components. It should be a given that you're getting your handlebars cut down at least because everyone runs different widths. Everyone has a different width on the upper body and you're just gonna have to experiment to see what works for you. I run something like a 74 or a 76. So try something like that and also try some slim fit grips as well. I've got small hands, like a small to extra small in gloves, and the Ergon Slim Fits fit me really well, and I tend to get less arm pump when I'm not holding onto a grip that's too fat. If you can't afford a new bike just yet, or you're not sure what you want from your new bike, but you wanna test some things out, you could invest in a couple of stem lengths. So 10 or 20 mils shorter can feel a massive difference. You can also try moving up and down the steerer to try and get a feel for whether you like a lower front end or not. So crank lengths is something I'll always look for and it's something I always upgrade and maybe it's a pricey upgrade but consider getting a crank set that you can transfer over to new bikes year on year. I run a 165 millimeter crank length mainly because I can't get hold of a 160 mil. I would if I could, but basically having a shorter crank length means that your feet are closer together, which makes it more manageable to steer the bike and manoeuvre when you stood up. But it also brings your foot closer to underneath your knee for a more efficient pedaling position and a less painful one on your knees as well. Now, obviously every rider needs to tune their suspension according to their weight. But if you're similar weight to me, then you might find that you're right at the bottom of the charts when it comes to recommended air pressure and compression and rebound settings. But what if you're off the charts completely? Or what if you're running your compression wide open and it still feels too firm? There's a few things I've learned over the years that can make that feel a little better. So a little bit of background on suspension forks. It's basically just a big old damping unit to stop you from bottoming out completely. You'll have air in one side on an air fork, which will start to resist as you go deeper into your travel. And on the other side, you'll have oil. And basically you have these stacks of shims that drive through the oil. And the bigger the shim, the harder it is to go through the oil. The smaller the shim, the easier it is to go through the oil. But when you buy a bike, your forks are generally standardized. They're set up for an average weight. But if you're a smaller, lighter rider, it's probably gonna be a little over damped for you. So it might feel a little firm in that initial stroke. Now, incidentally, this is what a women's tune is. It's effectively a light tune. They'll have different shim stacks to accommodate for that lighter rider. But it is something you can achieve on standard forks. If you take it to a specialist, they can adjust those shims for you and make it feel just a little bit softer and a little bit more buttery in the initial stroke. 
If you're buying a bike from scratch, something you may want to consider is coil suspension. So obviously you can get coil rear shocks, but you can also get coil conversion kits for air forks as well. The thing I like about coil suspension is you can play around with different coil weights and tailor it to your specific weights or to what sag you like to run. And you won't need to take it to a specialist like you will with air. Well, hopefully at least some of that information has been useful for you, or at the very least, it's given you a bit more confidence in what you need to look for in a new bike. The most important thing to remember is you're the expert in you. Don't let anyone else sway you on what is important for a short rider, or indeed, what is a good bike anyway? It's what's important to you and how the bike feels for you.